Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thanks for joining this session. My name is Stan Fast. I'm an application development engineer with 3M's Nextel Fiber Lab, which is part of 3M's Advanced Materials Division. I'm joined here today uh, by my colleague, Molly Johnson, who will be helping to uh, manage the chat and moderate the uh, and facilitate the, the Q&A at the end. Uh, thanks again for, for joining. Today I'll be talking about a, a new uh, developmental product uh, for our, our business called 3M Nextel 610 Topreg. It's a toe-based um, uh, product uh, that's being developed to be compatible with automated processing for the production of oxide-oxide ceramic matrix composites. Uh, just a couple quick comments before I, I jump into the slides. A uh, portion of this work was uh, done uh, with great support from Electro Impact. So just want to, to recognize uh, that team. And also uh, 3M Nextel uh, is an export controlled uh, product uh, controlled by the uh, US Department of, of Commerce. Uh, however, uh, there is not information included in, in here that is uh, considered export controlled. Just a quick, uh, quick comment about 3M Nextel for no, those that may not be aware. We produce uh, continuous filament aluminum oxide based ceramic fibers. And we have four primary chemistries shown here that we produce uh, in roving form and then convert into uh, various form factors, including, uh, including fabrics. Uh, and the um, chemistry type that this uh, new developmental product that I'll be speaking about uh, is based on is the Nextel 610, uh, which is an all alumina, uh, all alpha alumina uh, fiber uh, with uh, the highest uh, initial tensile strength and highest modulus of uh, our four fiber types and is uh, a primary uh, product uh, reinforcement uh, fiber used in uh, ceramic matrix composites. Uh, to start, I want to, to set the stage a bit with the uh, showing the, the flow, process flow of uh, producing ceramic matrix composites and uh, contrast what is typically done today with what we're trying to enable with this new uh, 610 Topreg product. So on the top uh, is the, the flow for uh, fabric-based uh, Oxox CMCs, which is predominant today. So starting with a, a roving, uh, fiber, uh, weaving that into a fabric, uh, followed by sizing removal. Uh, that roll of fabric then goes through a uh, ceramic slurry uh, infiltration process to produce a finished prepreg roll, and then on to a converting uh, process to cut out plies for layup on the uh, part uh, uh, geometry part tool, uh, and then cured and fired into a finished uh, finished ceramic part. And well, what, what we're trying to, to move to and enable with this Topreg product uh, is, is on the bottom half of this slide. So starting with a, uh, 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 Nextel roving, uh, spreading that uh, into a, uh, a flat ribbon uh, that can then be uh, infiltrated uh, with a, a ceramic slurry. Uh, and that finished core or bobbin uh, can drop directly into uh, an AFP automated fiber placement machine for auto layup uh, and then uh, followed by, by cure and center. So, so why are we wanting to do this? Uh, you know, following the, the you know, similar path that's been taken for, for carbon fiber, uh, we're trying to um, uh, increase, improve efficiency of, of producing Oxox CMC parts and removing uh, some of the waste involved. So uh, with a, uh, an automated process such as AFP, we can reduce scrap rates, lower overall material costs, uh, utilize higher denier uh, roving uh, more efficiently, and uh, you know produce parts using an automated uh, process that uh, can enable some additional uh, additional benefits. Uh, there are some some limitations. This is not something that will completely uh, replace or eliminate uh, hand laid parts. 
Uh, there are, are limitations with respect to uh, geometries and feature sizes. Uh, very complex geometries uh, are likely to remain with, with hand layup. Um, uh, but where appropriate, um, uh, we see this as a, um, uh, a next step in the, the evolution of OXOX CMCs to produce um, thermal structures for areas within engine exhaust, such as thermal shielding, uh, exhaust cone, exhaust uh, nozzles, etc. So to introduce the, the product, uh, showing the inputs on the left-hand side, uh, the process steps in the middle, and then the output on the right. So again, we're starting with Nextel 610, uh, 10,000 denier roving. Uh, we're spreading that in a controlled fashion and applying a, uh, a sizing, a water-soluble sizing to maintain stability of that uh, spread toe. Uh, the other input being a, a 3M developed uh, ceramic matrix slurry, uh, where we've developed an all alumina system uh, to work with the all alumina fiber. And there's a specifically designed organic binder package uh, that's part of that, that slurry. Uh, and that, uh, as you'll see in subsequent si slides, it aids in the, the layup process. And then a release liner to carry the, the material and allow it to be wound onto to level wound cores and, uh, and packaged and shipped. Uh, so once we have the the spread roving, it goes through the coating process to inf infuse the slurry uh, into the toe, and that water-soluble sizing is, is removed from the surfaces of the, of the fiber, uh, followed, uh, followed uh, by a drying process um, to remove uh, water content. So this is essentially a dry, uh, a dry matrix, uh, less than 1% water. Uh, and what's one of the unique things about this product compared to um, uh, the existing fabric prepregs on the market today is that this is a, a room temperature uh, stable uh, prepreg uh, does not require cold storage during uh, transport or or uh, uh, prior to prior to use. And then it's wound onto a, a level wound roll to produce a finished core that can be uh, loaded into an AFP machine as as she, seen there on the right. A bit more about the, the prepreg. Again, a 10,000 denier roving Nextel 610. Uh, we're spreading nominally to a, a quarter inch width, uh, which results in a, a nominal thickness of approximately 200 microns. Uh, the ceramic content uh, of the prepreg approximately 50%. Uh, and again, an all alumina system. Uh, in addition to that dry uh, room temperature stable um, uh, matrix, uh, the organic binder package is formulated to have uh, a certain amount of heat activated tack. So at room temperature, um, it has little to no tack. And then during the, the layup process, uh, through the use of, of heat, um, there's enough uh, uh, tack developed to allow for layup onto the tool and layup on subsequent uh, plies. So here's uh, some pictures showing uh, kind of where we started and where we've ended up with respect to um, tackiness and, and layup in the AFP process. Uh, so in the picture on the left and on the bottom, uh, it shows that uh, we're using uh, an IR heat lamp to heat the surface just ahead of uh, laying the, the toe onto the, to the surface. Uh, and, and again, that uh, allows for the right amount of uh, tack to be achieved. Uh, when we started um, and we're evaluating different, um, you know, different binder packages, you can see the, um, uh, the low and poor tack we achieved. And then through uh, an iterative process, uh, we're able to achieve uh, the right amount of tack to, to lay up uh, panels and, and, and plies as shown there on the right uh, at speeds up to a uh, thousand inch uh, per minute. So here's a, uh, on the right, uh, an SEM micrograph of uh, a polished centered uh, panel cross section. Uh, this is a 20 ply panel laid up in a 0 90 fashion, uh, ply thickness uh, of, of roughly a tenth of a millimeter. And you can see there in the, the image that um, 
you know, we're, we're achieving a consistent distribution of, of fiber and matrix throughout, uh, throughout the part. And, uh, uh, the fiber volume content uh, being achieved, uh, at least in this specific panel, 41.3%. Um, and you can see the, the mechanicals, basic mechanical properties listed there, which I'll, I'll show here as well on the next uh, slide with, with a bit of context. So here is uh, tensile strength, tensile modulus, and uh, inter, inter laminar shear, uh, short beam shear strength of uh, this uh, material uh, uh, in a finished uh, centered panel um, and, and showing this. Uh, uh, so the 3M product there in red shown against other available um, uh, prepregs uh, on the market. Um, not to, to draw any firm conclusions, just to show that, you know, what we're, what we're achieving here is, is in family with, with what's, uh, uh, what's available uh, today. So the next few slides, so some of the um, uh, experimentation and trialing that was done uh, with, with, uh, with AFP to, to start to define what the, the limitations are of the, of the material. So started with uh, some steering trials shown here on both uh, carbon uh, and PET substrates. Uh, evaluated through a range of, of radii from 500 to 2,500 millimeters and uh, down to a uh, radius of about 1,000 millimeters, did not see any defects. And as we drop below that, uh, down towards 500 millimeters, start to see some of the, uh, you know, the buckling and, and wrinkling uh, showed there uh, on the right. We then proceeded to evaluate some more complex geometries uh, and, and wanted to um, produce, uh, you know, a, a part that, uh, you know, in, in reduced scale that would be, you know, typical of, of you know, what we see um, being compatible with, with this type of uh, layup process. Um, so, so produced a, a cone that you see there, 20 inch diameter at the base and 22 inch height. Uh, in varying orientation, 0, 90, 45, 30, and had good success in producing a, a finished uh, 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 laid up part there shown in the bottom right. And then we also uh, built a tool to evaluate uh, a range of, of angles and in, in radii as uh, shown there on the, on the right, a five-sided tool to, to evaluate layup in, in various orientations. And this shows the results of that in, in, uh, in a bit more detail. So the pictures across the, the top are uh, of the 90 degree, 20 millimeter radius corner, and then across the bottom, the 90 degree, 10 millimeter radius corner. And saw uh, you know, good, uh, good results in, in all of these uh, with maybe one, one weak spot there at the 90, 20. Uh, 45 degree ply with a little bit of gapping, um, but that's something we think can be addressed and eliminated through some fine tuning of, of uh, uh, AFP layup settings. And then on through processing, so some images here of a um, uh, angled panel from that, that tool shown previously uh, after layup. Um, after autoclaving and then after centering and measured the thickness in seven locations um, across the, the width of the part uh, in order to show, um, uh, you know, thickness after layup versus th thickness after centering and are seeing, you know, good, good consolidation to a relatively consistent uh, thickness uh, on a centered, uh, centered part. So to, in summary here, to, to wrap, wrap this up, um, uh, you know, we're highlighting a, a new uh, developmental product, 3M Nextel 610 toe preg, um, uh, with a couple unique features, uh, a dry prepreg uh, uh, matrix and with heat activated tack for compatibility within, within AFP uh, layup techniques, 
and are seeing good uh, mechanical results. Uh, next step, uh, we're continuing to, to you know, finalize uh, development of this and start to, to, to scale. Uh, we're doing some uh, small volume sampling at this point and, and continuing to work to um, identify uh, constraints and, and uh, uh, limitations in, in uh, uh, use of, the, of this particular product. So thanks for joining and for your time and attention and, and we can um, uh, try to address your, your questions. Thanks, Dan. Um, that was a wonderful presentation. It looks like we have some questions coming through. So let's see here. We have one from Sean. What are the surface requirements for first ply tackiness onto the tool? Availability of one eighth inch toe wear on AFP due to alumina. Yeah, let me let me try to address those. I'll take that that one inch one eighth inch toe um, first. Uh, so far, you know, our focus has been on on you know the ten thousand denier uh, quarter inch toe and and optimizing uh, that uh, that form. Um, you know, I think. Uh, I think longer term, our our direction has been probably in the or anticipated direction has been in maybe the opposite uh, way, using a, a even higher denier, 20,000 20, denier to look at half inch. Um, uh, so it, it's, you know, eighth inch isn't something we've we've had on the radar, but uh, I'm not saying it's it's not possible or can't be looked at. So it certainly would be, I guess, interested in hearing more about what might be needed there. Um, and I guess I'll jump just to, uh, so it's being displayed here, I'll jump to my last slide just with my contact information. If there's any specific follow-up that um, isn't addressed here in the Q&A, you can, can reach out to me via email. Um, uh, so I guess with, with eighth, eighth inch, it's a matter of, um, you know, is it is it feasible, you know, to, to spread a, a 10,000 denier to a narrower uh, width? Um, I, I don't think we're we're um, looking to to move below a ten thousand denier just for um, you know economic reasons. Um, so 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 that's my response to the to the eighth inch. Um, uh, where on AFP? Yes, that was uh, uh, um, a bit of a concern early on with respect to the material of the. Um, the rollers, um, so there, there was a, um, a kind of a, a hardened coating that was uh, applied to, to rollers that the AFP had to help uh, help with that abrasion resistance. And I'm, I don't have that at my fingertips of what specifically was used, but um, there was a, a way to address, uh, address that. Um, and then surface requirements for first ply tackiness onto tool. Um, so we've, you know, in everything we've been doing with with flat panels and you know on the geometries that we we showed, um, we've been using a, a polyimid film uh, as a base layer, um, and, and that's something that can be um, taken through, um, you know, the autoclaving uh, step. I think longer term, you know, we realize for, um, you know, that may not be viable for more complex geometries. So um, looking at um, and evaluating uh, you know, release agents is uh, something that'll be, be some of the future work. Thanks, Dan. So we have another question from Damien. What width tolerance can you achieve on the toe prig? Yeah, good question. So, um, uh, we're, that's something we're still we're still working through, and, and um, you know as we uh, continue to develop the process and, and scale the process to finalize. So I I I, um, uh, I don't think there's a, a spec yet I can can offer. Um, certainly, you know what's been uh, if I can kind of compare compare it to what I understand to to be the. Uh, kind of standard for for slit carbon fiber of a um, um, you know a, a tolerance of 
you know, plus or minus five to plus or minus 10 thou, I think is pretty typical. You know, we're not going to be achieving uh, something like that with, with this spread process. Um, you know, probably something along, more along the, the lines of um, uh, plus or minus uh, plus or minus 30 mil. But again, that's still being kind of finalized and, and, uh, and optimized. We've got another question from Jack. What sizing do you use on this composite? Um, sure. So, uh, and I seem to be referring to the the sizing on the on the fibers. So, um, you know, we're starting with our uh, with our water based uh, uh, roving, and of course that. Um, that water sizing is removed during the, the spreading process and we apply a, um, um, a water soluble sizing to it. So I, you know, that's, it's something um, uh, that I think we're, we're not disclosing the details of at this point, but it's um, um, uh, that, that sizing is, uh, uh, you know, again, there to, to stabilize the, the toe and then again, it is water soluble. So then, when it's uh, when we when we coat the ceramic slurry, that that uh, uh, sizing is removed from the from the fiber interface. Um, I know we're getting close to time. I think we have time for one last question. Uh, let's see. This one comes from Sebastian, and he says twenty seven percent. Oh, I lost it for a second. Twenty seven percent of fiber volume fraction in the top rig. What? fiber volume fraction possible to reach on the final laid up part yeah so on a on a finished uh centered part uh you know fiber fiber volume it, you know in the 40 to 45 percent range is is you know pretty typical in what we would you know what we're um planning on for this and of course that's um um you know that that uh um Kind of interplay between fiber volume and and uh, uh, porosity amount is somewhat uh, uh, controlled based on you know what's decided on on for a, a cure and center cycle. But but yeah, finished fiber volume fraction that's um, typical for you know ox ox CMC sees today of, of forty to forty five percent is what we're we're um, what we're planning for here. Great. Well, I think we're just a tad over time. So I wanted to say thank you again for everyone who attended this session. If you have further questions, feel free to reach out to Stan directly. His email is right up on the screen, swfast at mmm.com. And also feel free to um, visit us at the 3M booth at Jack. We'll be there for the next or for today and a little bit tomorrow. Um, we look forward to chatting with you. Thank you very much.